the, you know, you hear a lot of people who say, well, it's not solving the root causes of crime, so, you know, why should we even do it? It's, it's not going to alleviate poverty or anything like that. And it's true, and that's, those are complex issues, and, you know, there's no silver bullet for that. But sometimes it's just enough to get crime off street so that people can live in peace. When I was growing up, it wasn't the same. So they, they need to know that relying on this bureaucratic process is a crop. Some are illuminators you can pay up to. North Main and North Point Douglas are two of Winnipeg's toughest and most crime-ridden neighborhoods. Like everything else, Winnipeg's quest for police surveillance cameras began with fire. This house on Salter was firebombed in 2007. After committing that crime, the perpetrators ran up Salter to Mountain and were caught on cameras at this shell station. The police were able to apprehend them only thanks to those cameras. That story had an echo of familiarity for Scott Fielding, the city councillor for St. James and Brooklands. This individual right here um, was caught murdering someone uh, in Toronto and crime cameras helped to catch uh, this individual. They went to the Xerox Tower and he was uh, going uh, in there and he was um, he murdered a, a girl in there. They were either going in there to sell drugs or apparently to have sex at some point. And video images uh, caught him going into Xerox Center and then also caught him going out. And they played this over the national uh, media as well as local media. And this individual turned himself in because he saw the visual image of himself. And because of this, the Toronto, uh, the Toronto kind of did a pilot project in terms of some surveillance cameras that are in place. But a perfect example, once again, it's on, uh, on YouTube and a variety of different sources of, of how uh, crime cameras can help to, uh, to apprehend criminals. So. Fielding is leading efforts on city council to get the cameras installed, and they won't just be going in North Main or North Point Douglas. Uh, crime isn't something that just happens downtown, it really happens throughout, uh, throughout the area, and that was kind of a focus for me when I first got involved in, in, in politics and <coughs> decided to run, in fact, uh, that year where I was elected in 2006. Uh, we had our car stolen uh, from the Clarion Hotel area, which is in St. James. We had our garage broken into and stole, you know, all our bikes and that sorts of stuff, which is in St. James as well. The downtown areas are, are, are obviously the focus of it, but, uh, and that's my big priority here at City Hall. It's, uh, you know, making sure that our, our community is a little bit safer. And as such, the crime cameras that, uh, that I was proposing is something that's worked um, effective in other jurisdictions, so yep. I thought we need to bring it here to, to make our community a little bit safer safer. At about 25 hours into 2008, a pregnant woman sat huddled in the doorway of this house pleading for her life. She was shot through the door with a shotgun and she died along with the baby she carried. You can still find this memorial for Joanne Hepner and her baby in front of their house on Magnus. It's one of the most tragic sights you can find in the North End, but there's plenty of competition. North Main and North Point Douglas are two of Winnipeg's toughest, most crime-ridden neighborhoods. You cannot walk here without passing crack house after crack house, squat after squat, without seeing gang tag after gang tag after gang tag. Some of which are for international gangs so tough and nasty, no one will even admit they're in Winnipeg. You'll see notices telling you when places are unfit to live in, and when they harbored criminals unfit for society. And sometimes, you'll just see hell. You'll also see this. A few of the citizens in North Point Douglas have installed surveillance cameras on their property to help with the neighborhood's many struggles. Struggles Marty Gold is all now? too familiar yeah. with. Marty Gold is the host of the Great Canadian Talk Show, a drive-time talk radio program that covers crime, politics, and sports in the city of Winnipeg. They need to know that relying on this bureaucratic process is a crock of shit. This is being drawn out in a manner that, uh, that I really wonder what's, why, why they are making a big drama out of something that is really very elementary and does not require the kind of prolonged, protracted process that they're engaging in. Um, I'm mystified by that. What do they need to know? How much the camera costs? Can the city afford the budget we give them? And the camera should not be very expensive. What kind of data collection system are we going to use, and at what under what criteria are we going to review the the data, and uh, under what criteria are we going to 
uh, uh, dispose of the data in other words hold tapes or whatever for two weeks or hold them somebody said three days which is a ridiculously short period of time i think the one question is how advanced or you know top of the line of a system or of a camera is really needed in other words uh if you're doing this on the basis of specs you don't need a three chip camera we know you don't need a three chip camera right you don't need a television quality camera. So the question is, what kind of camera, at what level does a camera give you enough um, clarity uh, to, uh, in terms of the picture to be able to be useful? I think those are the only things really that are outstanding is, you know, at what point is a camera too cheap? It's a good question. We've all seen the little TV screens at 7-Eleven and Walmart, the ones meant to tell us we're being watched. But those clearly won't cut it for city streets at night or damage from vandalism. Jason Avison, a representative for NICI, a local closed circuit television company, had the answers. This is actually a vandal resistant camera. The housing itself is made out of composite, it's very durable. These also have the polycarbonate dome, they also make cameras such as this one here. It's a fixed camera, mm -hmm. but it has IR illuminators around the outside of the camera. So in low lighting or in darkness, it has a sensor built in mm -hmm. where it'll actually illuminate an area. Some IR illuminators you can pay up to $3,000 to see 150 feet away in total blackness. The vandal resistant uh, is more expensive because you're paying for a, a better construction. Which covers the nuts and bolts of the cameras, what they can do and how much they cost, but not how they can best be put to use on Winnipeg streets. Linda Lavalley, Director of Security at the University of Manitoba, is currently working on a welcome building for the university that will support live 24-7 monitoring and surveillance. Now, the U of M's CCTV setup is certainly intense. It would have to be to protect Manitoba's third largest community. But the thing is, students usually aren't hardened criminals. Students wouldn't have dealt crack out of this house in North Point Douglas or firebombed this one. Hardened criminals would. But they'll soon find it a lot more difficult. In March of 2008, Councillor Fielding's proposal to put crime cameras in high crime areas of Winnipeg came before City Council. They approved it and asked the Winnipeg Police Service to provide a report about where the cameras should go. Mayor Sam Cates is more than excited to have another tool for fighting crime and making Winnipeg feel safer. It works. It's showing in other cities how cameras work. Uh, one, they do prevent crime because most people don't want to commit a crime when, if they think they're being watched. Two, if a crime does happen, cameras have proven that they help the police catch the criminals. So if you can't prevent the crime, you certainly want to catch the people who did it so they can do the time. Yep. It's gone to the Winnipeg Police Service. We're going to get a report. The report will come forward. It'll go through the proper channels. Hopefully it'll get to the floor of council where you and I are right now, and there will be a positive recommendation from council. It all comes down to what Robert Galston said right at the start of this documentary. There's no silver bullet for these issues, but the cameras will help. And when it comes to public safety, we have to ask ourselves, do we have the right to remain hidden?